Hi everyone, this is Amy Hager here and I'm here just to share with you why I decided to move to Ecuador. So when my daughter was born, um, my husband at the time got Lyme disease and he was really, really sick. And that was also around the time when I found out about a raw food lifestyle and uh, you know, raw till four, whole food plant-based and we started following all of these, all of uh, these people on YouTube who were uh, living that lifestyle. And we moved to Vilcabamba, Ecuador. I saw Angela Stokes Monarch and Mount Monarch's videos, and Angela had a baby at the time. She had a unassisted water birth, and I was very, very inspired by her videos. And uh, at the time, I know she was doing a, or creating a community, and I was really excited about the idea of creating a healthy community with a group of other moms. I really wanted my children to grow up with other children that were eating healthy. So uh, I was excited about that. And then also in Vilcabamba, Ecuador, the cost of living is really, really cheap. Uh, so for example, when we were living there, our rent there was only 180 a month. Granted, we were living very Ecuadorian style. We were not living in a nice place. And looking back on it, I probably would have paid up and gotten a nicer place than where we stayed. There were some pros and cons to that though. We were living on uh, some land with a family, an Ecuadorian family, and we got to know the family and I don't think that we would have been able to get uh, in contact or connect as well with some of the locals if we didn't live on their property. A lot of the families in Ecuador, they live together. You know, they're all on the same property. They have like a permaculture, you know, the family that we lived with, they had their own chickens, they had their own, they had a septic system, which was essentially a hole in the ground. Um, you know, they had the their own little gardens and uh, tomato houses. And they were all essentially just doing work on the land of some kind in some way, shape or form. Uh, in Ecuador, it used to be a feudal state. So it used to be like one main landowner and then a bunch of uh, slaves back in the 70s, and then they broke that up around then, around that time frame. I don't know the exact details of the politics, but it was around that time. And pretty much you can just go have whatever land you wanted. You know, you had to do is go put a fence around it. And, uh, you know, so a lot of the people who are actually from Ecuador, the, you know, the families, the generations of families have land. So they're not getting paid very much money uh, compared to American wages. For example, an Ecuadorian would, could work anywhere from you know, to for $5 a day to $20 a day. And that, you know, $20 a day would be a very good wage for somebody in Ecuador. Um, yeah, so we just wanted some time off of work because we were working and doing a dog training business and it was growing and it was getting very chaotic. We would have like 20 plus dogs in the house at a time. And we had a newborn baby and a sick husband and we just needed to stop. We needed to sell the business. We needed to take care of the baby. We needed to take care of him and his health. And I was just thinking at the time, nothing is more important than your health. You know, if you die or if anything happens to you because of your Lyme disease, because it was starting to progress and it was getting very, very, very bad. Um, I was just thinking nothing else matters. Like this is the only thing that matters. So we moved to Ecuador and we lived there for six months. We were going to live there and stay there. But after living there, we just realized that, you know, Daryl, he's a dog trainer, for example, and he wanted to continue training dogs. And in Ecuador, a lot of the dogs are strays. So he wasn't going to have much of a career in Ecuador. And, uh, you know, the other thing is it, it just gets to be really tricky to uh, do a lot of logistical things unless you know the language really well. Neither one of us spoke Spanish very well, and it just got to be a little bit of a headache with dealing with things like getting a driver's license. And, you know, at the time we were going to move so and live there, like get a dual citizenship. So we were trying to get our cedula, and we were just constantly going back and forth in and out of town, trying to get all of the documentation that we needed. And there was all these communication issues, and then we'd drive an hour back to Vilcabamba, and then have to drive an hour back to Loja, which is the nearest big city, just to... Um, you know, get, you know, if that's where you do all of your government work. So like, that's where you would deal with the driver's license and deal with, uh, possibly getting your cedula. Um, yeah, so it just got to be, uh, a little bit of a headache. And also we wanted to possibly buy land there and move there at the time when we moved, we were like, we're done with the U S <laughs> you know, we don't need to move back and, you know, moving out and moving to another country is the answer. And so when we moved out, we moved to the other country, you realize that there's a lot of conveniences. Like we have access to so many different products, driving, 
Uh, we have a lot of luxuries in America that you don't get out in Ecuador. Um, you know, for example, one thing uh, is just safety. You know, just the fact that we could call 911 at any point in time. So when we were in Ecuador, there were definitely some people who got attacked. Um, you know, it wasn't something that happened a lot, but because it was a smaller town, you knew who these people were and you would hear about it. And, uh, you know, there was times at night that we would be sitting there in our cheaply made Ecuadorian home sleeping, thinking we're going to die, <laughs> you know, so which nothing happened. I think that the family that we lived with protected us in some way, shape or form. Uh, so, yeah, we were we had no issues personally. I think, uh, you know, it's just like any city. If you are out late at night or if you are. Uh, if you see a lot of riffraff and you go and hang out with that, then you're going to find problems. But for the most part, you know, if you're going to bed at a decent time, you know, not hanging out at the bars, you're not going to have any issues. So, uh, yeah, we moved to Ecuador. And then after six months, we decided to move back. And uh, we had just the most amazing journey. We met some really awesome people there. We saw people living in communities. And that was just really exciting to see alternative ways to live. We met, uh, you know, the head of the community taught me all about nonviolent communication. And uh, we learned about natural hygiene in Ecuador. I met some people who are studying natural hygiene. And Robert Schneidak, one of my mentors, who was a mentor for natural hygiene as well. So yeah, we had a really good experience. We learned a lot of different things. That's also where I learned about unschooling. So I'm unschooling my children right now and that's child-led learning. So it, it has definitely influenced and changed my whole life, the experience. I think everybody can benefit from going and living outside of the country for a period of time. And you know, you can always come back if you don't like it. Uh, one thing I would do differently if I ever were to go and live uh, in another part of the world is I would make sure I have a place to come back to. So if I didn't want to live in the U.S. and I thought I was done, I would maybe have a house here. I wouldn't sell the house. I would just rent it out in the States and then I would go live in whatever part of the country that I wanted to live in um, just to make sure that if I didn't like it, I had some place to come back to. So that was, we just got lucky because my parents lived in Florida and when we moved back here, we moved into their house because they were on a cruise ship and we were able to look around and find out where we wanted to live when we came back because we knew we didn't want to go back to Chicago. We wanted to have this fruit forest. I always had this like fruit forest, you know, dream and I wanted to be around more tropical fruits and this whole fruitarian lifestyle that I'm into. And uh, yeah, and it's awesome so far, so far so good. You know, Florida is definitely a change. It's not, uh, you know, it took me some time to get adjusted. It's not a big city. Like I, I came from a big city and uh, there's definitely some adjusting going on. And you know, when we were in Ecuador, that was a small city. I don't even know how many people were there, but I actually really loved it. I loved living in a small city like that and getting to know everybody. Uh, I'm here in Claremont, Florida, and I am rubbing my legs <laughs> because it's getting nighttime and the mosquitoes are starting to come out and they're vicious. So I'm going to have to cut it short. Moms, click on the link down below. I have a free ebook, Weight Loss for Moms, if you're interested. And if you like this channel, please like, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications for future videos that I have coming out. Hope you guys like this video and sending you all so much love. Let me know if you have any requests. Bye.